Machine learning can be used for content moderation online, which is a complex area that's currently highly labor intensive. One of the goals is to remove the need for human moderators completely because they can experience severe mental health issues due to the nature of their work. Laura Hanu is a machine learning engineer from a company called Unitary. They've developed machine learning software to detect hate speech and toxic comments, as well as recognize harmful content in imagery like graphic violence or nudity. The main mission at Unitary is to build a safer online world, and we're trying to do that by using artificial intelligence to detect harmful content. Uh, so we're doing that by um, trying to teach uh, machine learning models to interpret videos in context. So um, in other words, we're not just looking at the visual aspect of a video, um, we're looking at the audio, we extract the speech from the audio, we look at the text surrounding it, whether it's on screen or in captions or comments, um, and interpret um, them as a whole. So we make sure we get this um, tone and setting right. Ensuring online safety is one of the biggest challenges we are facing today and the scale of this problem is actually huge. There's 80 years worth of footage of videos uploaded to the internet every day. It would be very hard for a human to manually go through each and every one of them and check it for harmful content. Having to look at these sort of videos and looking for extreme content is having a huge um, toll on um, the moderator's mental health. So this is where automating this process comes really in handy. We can actually process up to 25,000 video frames per second, which is an uh, impressive feat, and we have a great platform engineering team who is making this possible. So how does the software work? So a machine model learns by looking at lots and lots of examples. Um, so for example, in the, if you're trying to detect cats and dogs and teach a machine uh, model to learn to distinguish between one, one makes a cat a cat and a dog a dog, you will feed it lots of examples of what a cat looks like, lots of examples of what a dog looks like, and it will learn to find patterns of what makes a cat a cat. Um, like for example, pointy ears in the case of a cat, or like um, bigger like nose in the case of a dog. Programmers working on the machine learning software face many challenges. So the biggest challenge we're facing is actually building diverse and representative data sets. Um, so this means that we want to give examples to our machine learning models that are representative of the real world and it doesn't learn to have uh, biases or discriminate against certain groups of people. So if a model only sees, um, for example, someone's ethnicity or gender in a negative context uh, and doesn't see it in a positive context, it would learn to maybe associate uh, that characteristic with negative traits, which we don't want it to. Another uh, challenge we're actually facing is when it comes to hiring. Uh, we want to hire a diverse range of people that have the right balance of um, great technical backgrounds and machine learning backgrounds and also a passion for social good. What skills and qualifications do you need to get into the field of machine learning? The most important subjects to study at school would be um, maths, um, further maths, and just usually scientific um, topics such as physics or science, since that develops your creative problem solving, which is really important in this field. If your school offers you the opportunity to learn computer science, uh, that's definitely a uh, good way to get into the field and a, a necessary skill to have. So, um, however, it's not a prerequisite, um, so you can um, sort of go into a technical or scientific field first and then um, learn these um, computer science or programming skills as you go as well. So most people I know that work in this field are actually deeply curious people who love to get to the bottom of really challenging problems. The most important skills to get into this area is to have a mathematics background, statistics, and uh, learn how to program, particularly in a language such as Python, which is really widely used in machine learning. What I love about this job is that it's just really fun to get to teach machine learning models to interpret really challenging content that would be difficult for even a human to interpret. There are 80 years worth of video footage uploaded to the internet every day. So is the technology going to be able to keep up? It's definitely a challenge, but what's certainly the case is that humans can't keep up. And typically a lot of people are involved today in manually reviewing content that's uploaded. And so technology has got a much um, better chance of keeping up. It can definitely scale, um, but what's a really interesting challenge for technology is keeping up with the, with the change as the way that 
that the type of content that people post online is changing all the time. People have new ways of communicating, of, of sort of referencing different things. And AI, you have to build AI technology that can keep up with that. Yes, it's got to, it's got to learn. It's not only 80 years worth of content that it's seen before. It's 80 years worth of content, including new new ways of expressing yourself that the AI doesn't understand. Exactly. There's always a new way of like referring to politicians or referring to types of drugs or whatever that's sort of currently trending. And you have to constantly keep up to date with the way people are sort of interacting and communicating on the internet. So we're asking the AI to identify things that are um, inappropriate, unacceptable, or harmful right. in some way. Um, how is that defined? How do we train the AI to say, well, this is acceptable, but this is unacceptable? It's a really good question. So at Unitary, we're not the arbiter of what's good and bad content. We basically classify content according to what we find inside. And we give that information to a social network or to a company to decide how they want to deal with that. So for example, we say this video contains um, people being beaten up. <laughs> And then they can people can respond how they want. And we tend to give content some sort of risk level. Like this is very high risk or very high likely, likelihood of containing content in this in this category. And we sort of classify content according to these different policies, but we don't determine what should be taken down or not, or we don't decide what's harmful in advance. Do you have any examples where um, something is the AI has said, yes, that's unacceptable, and you've looked at it and said... Well, it's, it's some puppies or something like that. <laughs> um, not as extreme as that, but it happens all the time because it's, it's definitely not 100% accurate. It's, it's predictive. And the way it works is you sort of give the AI, you train your model with lots of examples of one type of content and you train it to be able to recognise further examples of that. So, um, for example, we built an initial model to detect guns. So we gave the, um, we were training the model with lots of examples of images of guns. And an early version of this, it kept flagging um, microphones and telescopes as, as guns. And so we sort of had a look and realised that there was this common pattern because they looked a bit similar. And so the way that you deal with that is we then sort of proactively collected lots of images of, uh, of telescopes or microphones and labelled them as not guns. And so the model can then learn. At the moment, what, what are the limiting factors? Is it, is it computing power? Is it how smart we are at programming and setting up the AIs in the first place? So there, there are lots of limiting limiting factors. One is um, computing power. That's We're constantly demanding more and more uh, access to GPUs. But also something that's so important is the training data and getting that getting that right and getting a, a um, good distribution of, of data that's well labelled. Um, and it's so easy to um, have one class or another over-represented in your training set. Um, and so we want to make sure that we can have a really well-rounded um, set of data so that when our, our model can learn in a way that's representative of, of the real world. Are there any other applications of this technology? Definitely, there are loads. What Basically what we're building is an ability to understand visual content in context. So really understand what's in a video using AI. And our mission is to use that kind of technology to make the internet safer and help identify harmful content. But you could actually understand or identify any content and you can imagine it being used in a future um, way of doing sort of video search, for example, rather than searching on TikTok for all of the captions and titles, you can actually search inside the video. If you can really understand the, the content of a video, it, it opens up so many new applications. Well, thank you, Sasha. Thanks.